So thanks for joining me, guys. This is a practical coaching session. This is, we're going to talk about fizzbows. We're going to talk about how to find them, where to find them. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to run any ads. We're going to talk about how to handle the toughest objections they give you, how to convert them in this market right now. Now, here is how this whole thing started. The reason I wanted to call this session is I had a call with one of my students and she said, you know what? I don't work fizzbows anymore. They all sell. I'm like, mm, really? I know some do. Statistically, I've been tracking these statistics for many years. But all, oh, really? He says, yes. Like, all right, how many did you talk to? She said, three. So she was willing to bet her entire business, her income, let me fix this carpet so I don't trip, her income, her future of her, her family, on three conversations. That's crazy. And yes, some Fizzbos sell. Yes, some Fizzbos do sell because the market is crazy hot, right? Listings are in high demand. But don't buy into that. Three conversations mean nothing. And I'll show you today that even though they may think they're in advantage, they're really not. So we're going to run some numbers. I'm going to show you some. Uh... So the presentation, of course, we'll be rated R. You guys know me. Don't even show the slide. So here's what we're going to talk about today. Where to find motivated Fizzbo seller leads right now in today's market. And how to address when you get in a conversation with them the toughest objections. And this is like, we can sell without you. It's a hot market. You hear a variation of that, right? We don't want to list. Just bring us a buyer. Very common these days. My cousin is an agent. We're going to go with him. How will you get us more money? Any of these sound familiar? Yes. Do you have a buyer for me, Edwin? Yes, exactly. That's one of them. Edwin says, do you have a buyer for me? Very common. All right. So. We're going to address it. So let's start with this. Where do I find them first? I mean, you need to find them, get in conversation with them. This is as of this morning. I jumped on our good friend Zillow. Yeah, of course, I'm being sarcastic. And look at this. Anybody in Austin, Texas? Any, any of my students, any of you guys, any rock stars in Austin, Texas? Look at that. They're right now 97 for sale by owners in Austin. Good opportunity, right? If you know how to approach them, if you have the right system, right communication, you're going to convert some of them into listings. Right now, if you are in Orlando, Florida, any of my friends in Orlando, Florida, look at that. 101 Fizzbos waiting to be scooped up. Here's another one. Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. 119 for sale by owners. Now think about it. Do you think some of these people end up being good listings, good clients? Of course. Of course. And if you think, let's be really conservative, and let's say half of these 119 are either disguised agents who do some shenanigans, sellers who are not motivated, or these property have already been listed. So you still have 60 chances to score a good listing if you're in Vegas, and new ones are hitting Zillow every day. If you jump on a website like Fisbo.com, look at that. This is just in my area right now. 21 homes for sale by owner. And that's just in my little piece of the world in Northern Virginia. Look at this. Craigslist lists 109 right now within 15 miles around me. Lots of opportunities all around you. There was a time when, Fisbo for, when Zillow for a while pulled out the phone numbers. They are back now. So you have people who are raising their hand saying, I want to sell now. I'm ready to sell now. Think about it. With the right approach, you can help these people. You can show them you're going to make more money. Now, of course, you can't just go out and say, Mr. Mrs. Solo, you're going to make more money. List with me. That's what most agents do. Please don't do that. But the reality is they will. And I'll show you. We're going to put it right here on the board. And you tell me if it's going to make sense to you. Jackie says, can you check Somerville, South Carolina? Jackie, just jump on Zillow. Type in homes for sale and just turn off listed homes. Turn on for sale by owners in the search. And you'll be surprised how many you're going to have in your neighborhood. Okay? Check it out. There's a lot of opportunities. Now, what I'm curious about this dude here, I don't know what that artwork means. Is it drinking or is he like looking at something, a bottle or something? He's drinking, driving him crazy, this whole business of for sale by owner. All right, so now look, we are in Austin, Texas, 79 for sale by owners. And you're telling me there are no opportunities to list homes? Bullshit. Bullshit. A lot of them. Like this one. Look at these pictures. This is how they market their home. This is how they think they're going to get it sold. Now, notice what's below the price. Do you guys see it? Right there. Right there. Price increase 8,000. 
Well, honey, we got them fancy pictures, them color pictures I took with that fancy iPhone. We better raise the price. Look at these pictures. I mean, you need glasses just to focus. That, that's crazy. This is what they think we're going to get their property sold. See, friends, they need you. They just don't know it. They think this will get the job done. Is that crazy? Now, all you have to do is go into the details, scroll down. There it is right there in front of you. Pick up the phone, talk to them. And in about two minutes, now if you jump on board, I'm going to show you, you're going to get the system called Core Influence, how to talk to for sale by owners, how not to piss them off, how not to push them away. But you got the phone number right there, the contact information said, the address is there, you can go visit, you can call them, you can text them, there are all kinds of things you can do. And that's what the smart agents are doing right now. You already know the money is in the listing. I'm showing you right now on a silver platter. You don't have to run any expensive campaigns. You don't have to build any complicated systems. You don't have to waste thousands of dollars. None of that. It's right there in front of you. It requires the right system and the skills. That's the secret, my friends. Because at the end, these folks will list. Why not with you? You owe it to them. You owe it to yourself. And if you tell me, well, Barino, uh, fizzbos are tough. I don't want to work fizzbos. What you're telling me is I don't have the skill to work FISBOS because that's all it requires. No talent. I learned the hard way. This is not a matter of talent. This is a matter of skill. You need to develop a skill, communication skill, follow-up skill, confidence skill. Because you already know real estate. You know how to list a house. You know how to sell it. So it's a matter of communicating and building trust with these people. Because if you put yourself in a FISBOS situation, yes, they can be abrupt. Yes, they can be rude. Yes, they can be cold. Yes, they can be emotional. But think about it. They're getting bombarded by speculators, investors, and shitty agents who are reciting some script they got at the Mike Ferry seminar 20 years ago, and everybody says the same thing. And everybody is telling you, Mr. and Mrs. Fisbo, what you're doing is stupid. It's wrong. You should be listing with me. Now, how do you like when somebody tells you what you're doing is dumb? Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to be told they're wrong. You may be right about it, that it's a dumb idea, but you have to be more elegant, more persuasive, understanding their psychology before you can go out and say it. And you can say it in a very friendly, logical, and emotionally connected way with respect. That's how you win them over. You with me so far? All right, yeah, Miriam is right. List to exist, exactly. This does not require any complicated, expensive campaigns. You don't need any sleazy, pushy taxes. You don't need to be aggressive at all. On contrary, aggressive approach will only push them away. Just like you don't want to be manipulated. You don't want to be sold. You like when people are transparent. I mean, think about it. Right at the beginning, I told you, we're going to go over some cool stuff. You're going to learn some new cool stuff. At the end, I'm going to invite you to do the FISBO bootcamp with me. Straightforward. I'm very transparent with you. But I'm also giving you a lot of value. I walk the walk. Because you're going to deploy the same strategy with FISBO. You're going to be very transparent with them. You're going to tell them, hey, if this doesn't work out, I'd love to apply for the job. But let's just give it a shot first. Same concept. You're cool. You're kind with them. You're helpful with them and you're still high status. You don't suck up to them, you don't kiss up their ass, you don't do any of that. You don't also don't push them and manipulate them. None of that is necessary. You don't need complicated systems. This is not like seven zap years, need to connect to this, need to connect that. None of that. A good CRM is really all you need. There's no long follow-up. I mean, fuck, they're already on the market. How motivated do you want them to be? Now, yes, with that said, this does require some work. This is not like you sit on your butt, put a nice ad there, and 50 people knock on your door saying, come list me. Doesn't work that way, but it can be very profitable. I'll show you how. It can be also simple, fast, and now. This is now business. This is not a year from now. This is not like when you door knock or you run ads on Facebook or it's going to take months and months and months to convert. This happens now because you're dealing with people who you know where they live, you know who they are, and you know they want to sell. That's as easy as it can be. You can get on Zillow right now, have dozens and dozens of leads right now. You saw the evidence, right? Now, that's why I teach this now. It took me years to figure this shit out. And it took me forever to figure out this is not based on selling, this is based on psychology. And now I'm privileged to be called, I mean, it's kind of self-serving pat on the back. I'm a guru now. But I mean, nobody else teaches this based on the psychology, based on the kindness, based on relation. This is relationship marketing is what I teach. Not the traditional selling that you're going to hear from some coach who never sold a house in their life. And I know what I'm talking about. Now, brace yourself. What you're going to experience, if you haven't already, is that drunken monkey, that little voice that will tell you, I tried this and didn't work, or I heard this and I don't think it's going to work. Don't let that monkey ruin 
your 2021 chance to become a rock star agent with a lot of income because that's what I'm inviting you to do. This is not just about taking listings. This is way more than that. This is building a lifestyle and having the freedom. And it's going to be that little voice more than anything that's going to sway you to stay in your comfort zone. And the reason I know all that because the picture you see is me. That's Mr. Borino Fancy Coach in his Cadillac DeVille 1981 rust bucket. That was my house where I was homeless because I was fighting it. I was sitting in a seminar. I was sitting in a coaching session when somebody says, you should do this guy. And because my fear kicked in and told me, eh, it's uncomfortable, I don't want to get rejection, I don't want to talk to people, blah, 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 I don't want to bother people. That was the result. I know you're not going to get homeless. But I also know that if you step out of the comfort zone with the right system and the right tools, you can have the lifestyle. That's what got me. No talent. Just systems plus skills. And I want that for you. Whatever that is. You want to put the kids through a good college. You want to put money aside. You want to pay off some debt. You want to buy a new house. Whatever it is. It's all out there. And the hardest part for me is not to teach you real estate. Friends, listen to me. The hardest part for me is to convey to you. To inspire you that you can have it. It's out there. It's going to require work. It's going to require some effort. It's going to require some learning. But it's out there. That is the hardest part. So, watch this. It says, I watched your video yesterday. Today was my first time doing a Facebook call and I used the script in my first two calls, set up an appointment to view both homes. Two appointments just by watching this kind of training. That's all it takes. This is Taryn, called Fizbo my very first time and I got a preview appointment, nothing complicated. Very helpful video, thank you, Barina. So I know how to teach you this stuff. I can show you that it really is just a sequence of steps. Because look at this, this is hilarious. This is a $380,000 house that the seller for sale by owner was holding open. This is their open house sign. This is what they think is effective marketing. This is why when you come in with skilled presentation, good marketing, good advice, where you hold their hand and walk them through, well, okay, we are in a quarantine, no holding hands. But other than that, you demonstrate to them what it takes to sell the house. And you're going to see in just a moment how overwhelmed they get pretty soon, actual comment from a FISBO. You're going to understand your service is so valuable. I mean, think, this is the first impression they make about our house if they don't know how to even put a decent open house together. What else are they hiding? Where else do they need help? Here's the thing. You need to do the opposite of what average agents do. Those who are not here on this training do other stuff. So what do they do? Canned scripts. Please don't do canned scripts. You're going to be immediately labeled as just another salesperson. Stay away. No memorizing scripts at all. What I teach, what the core influence, and you will have a chance to get it, is a conversation marketing, conversation prospecting, where you treat people with respect like human beings and they treat you with respect back. Some will do business with you, some won't. But the relationship is based on trust, respect. No pressure and no closing. Those tactics are out the window. Please don't do that. No convincing them. The moment you try convincing is like arm wrestling. The moment you start bringing up the idea that it's a dumb, they're going to lose money, it's better with you, it's all these reasons, you're right. But the timing is not, the delivery is not. And that is just as important as the message. So no convincing, no fake, oh, I'm here to help, but I really want the listing. Don't do that. Some Facebook book or Facebook package where agents depend on printed marketing, some cheesy marketing materials to do the job for them. No brochure will build a relationship with the seller. You will, and I'll show you how. And here is a big mistake. They give up too soon. They hear, oh, we already have an agent, or we're going to go with our cousin, or we have a buyer. And they give up. Friends, please write this down. This is important. This is one of the most important I'm going to give you, most important ideas I'm going to give you today. I learned the hard way. This cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars in commissions. No joke. I'm not exaggerating a lot of money. What the seller says and what the seller ends up doing are very often two very different things. What they tell you, especially at the beginning when they're very optimistic that they're going to sell on their own. And what they end up doing at the end. Two very different things very often. And if you lost listings, many of you have, right? Can you relate to that? You know what I'm talking about. So stay away from these mistakes. Very, very important. Are you making any of these? Stop. Stop. They want your help. Think about it. Do you like cookies? I love cookies, man. I gotta tell you. Girl Scout cookies. Ooh. I mean, I got the Peloton. I'm trying to stay in shape, but you show up with Girl Scout cookies at our door, I'm buying the whole load. Doesn't matter how much. People like Girl Scout cookies, right? 
Now, before the COVID, how do people sell Girl Scout cookies? How do Girl Scouts sell them? Door to door. Nobody gets pissed off at Girl Scouts knocking on your door. You welcome them. Why? Because we want what the girls sell. We want the cookies. They're nice. They're good. Same with for sale by owners. It is not just about the money. You represent not just financial benefit, and I'll show you. We're going to break it down. The reality is people want to sell. They want help. And you have what they want. You have the insight, you have the experience, you have the guidance, you have the solution, you have the answers, and you have more money. And you may not even know it. Or maybe you do, maybe you just don't have a way to present it to the seller the right way. Let me show you, demonstrate this, watch this. Lauren just posted this here on Rockstars yesterday. Hey, I'm sorry we are going to cancel. Uh, she was supposed to show the property to the buyer, to uh, the for sale by owner, she had a buyer for it, and the for sale by owner texted. I'm gonna cancel, I can't handle all the overwhelming questions and people, this is too much. See what I mean? It's too much for them. It's a lot. You know what it takes to get a property sold. It's a lot of fucking work. Where do you think this gray hair came from? It's too much. And the idea would be like this totally respect what an auto. Listen, this is how I totally respect what agents have to deal with. So now imagine you walk in and with respect, with authority, you demonstrate not only are you better off with an agent, I'm the right agent for the job. My wife just wants to list with the house so that wants to list the house so that the route we were going to go. Boom. Another opportunity. Lauren should jump on it. This is a great opportunity. And I'll show you in a little bit later how you address these. We have an agent. We already go with an agent. Teresa, one of my students, just listed a $750,000 fist on Friday using Barino's advice. They just emailed me yesterday letting me know they had two land listings. They want me to list as well for another three fifty. dollars So now we're at a million. One phone call. No pressure. I have completely changed the way I approach sellers and it's working. Thanks, Borino. So a million dollars in inventory, that's a nice chunk of cash. That's what, about $30,000? I'll take that. So what is the secret? The secret is in conversations. You treat them like human beings. You listen. You ask the right questions. The Fisborino system and the core influence system you will be able to get has a whole bunch of them. There are like 87 different questions you can ask that build this relationship, build this trust. Marjena posted, let me give it to you in a real example, real life example. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. I have a question to you guys and to our coach Borino. I was trying to talk to one of the Fizzbos in my neighborhood. For a long time, I was unsuccessful. And today I tried again, called them and left voicemail message. This is an answer I received via text message. Hi, thank you for your interest. I won't be showing the house until the spring. I will update the information on Zillow. One feature important to see is the house has no basement. I'm selling the property by owner. If you have potential buyer, you must get the commission from them. When I'm ready to show the house, I will announce it. You will be welcome to bring qualified clients ready to purchase a home then. Please advise me how to deal with that seller. Now, what was interesting is if you saw the post here on Rockstars, there were about 12, 15, 20 comments, something like that. All of them pretty anonymously says, walk away. The initial gut reaction to all of it is this seller is a jerk and you shouldn't work with them. And I'm saying, hold on, not so fast, not so fast. Remember what I said earlier, what they say and what they end up doing can be two very different things. And what they need to go is through the process of selling, getting the taste like the previous seller. You saw that in Lauren's post. Once they get the taste of it, once they realize this, something is not right here. This is a lot of work. This is not what we expected. The tune can change. Are you with me? So don't jump too quickly to these silly conclusions because here is a client who doesn't even know how complex it can be, how dangerous it can be, how legally troublesome it can be, and how they're exposing themselves to all kinds of speculators, investors, shysters, crooks. And there are people out there who prey on for sale by owners because these are civilians, friends. These people don't know what it takes. They don't understand the legalities. They don't know that one little checkbox on a purchase contract can completely change the outcome of the transaction. You and I know that, but they don't. So don't be so quick. This seller can be a great seller. This can be a great listing. And with the right approach, I would totally go for it. And you know why? Because with this attitude, this seller will push away most of my competition automatically. I would say, ha, thank you. And I'll give it my best shot. And I would totally go for it. And I tell you, with the right nurture, with the right approach, with being helpful, not being attached to the commission, not being attached to the outcome, very often the seller says, you know what, this shit is not working. Let's talk. 
You've been helpful. You didn't try to pressure us. You didn't try to influence us. You didn't try to do anything other than be helpful, cool, be our resource. Why do you think they would go with somebody else? If they trust me, if they like me, if they realize they're in better hands with an agent and not to mention they're going to make more money, as you see in just a second. Does that make sense? Edwin has a very good question. As a matter of fact, let me just go through this, Edwin, and I'll get to it because this is important. I want to show you. Number one, part one, the math. Where is the money? Where is the money? So now watch. Check this out. See if this makes sense. You have a $300,000 house, okay? That's for sale by owner. And then you have a listed house. And just for the sake of easy math, we're gonna say that's a $300,000 house. And you're a qualified buyer. And buyers these days, pretty savvy, they're educated, they go online, they know what they're doing, right? Very often, more, they know more than agents. Not you guys, you're rock stars. Okay, so now watch. If I'm a buyer and I look at two properties and I know this one is listed and just for the sake of easy math, the seller is paying 5%. What's the first logical question I have here? I'm like, okay, where is this 5% which in this case is what? $15,000, right? Can you guys see it? Are we in shot? Yeah, good. So $15,000, I'm like, hold on a second. Where is the 15,000 going here? This seller is not paying commission. This seller is trying to pocket the 15 grand. So if I'm a savvy buyer, as many are, I know market is hot and the demand is hot, but that doesn't make people stupid. I would be like, wait in a second. This seller is trying to pocket the 15 grand. In other words, I'm paying the seller a commission for a service I'm not getting. Nay, 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 that makes no sense. So what is the first thing a logical savvy buyer would do? Subtract the 15,000, but that's the ending price he's willing to pay. So that's 290, 285, right? So I would like to buy this house for 285 to end with, but that's not what I'm gonna offer. I'm gonna negotiate a little bit. Are you with me so far? So if I'm an intelligent, smart, savvy buyer, I already see that I can save 15 grand. That's what makes that FISBO attractive, not the new kitchen. I can always put in a new kitchen for 15,000. Yeah, I can do a lot of that. You with me? So now, Who's going to save the money? The seller or the buyer with all the money? Who's going to write the check at the end? You with me? So the FISBO will not pocket, in most cases, the commission. This is what they're trying to do. Are you with me? Is this making sense, guys? I don't want to move further because it's clear they're not the same property. From a buyer's perspective, this cannot be the same price. Think, where is the money going to go? Now, you cannot save the commission twice. It's going to go to the buyer or to the seller. Why would I pay as a savvy buyer to the seller? Didn't think of it that way, did you? Is that good? So now, Let's look at Maha's comment. Hi, Boreen. I want to ask you about a FISBO follow-up system. Do you offer to do an open house for them? Or what kind of help can we show them that offers them as an example of being helpful and not coming across as pushy agent? Great question, Maha. I would recommend, once you have a relationship with a for sale by owner, you can absolutely do an open house. And some of my students do more than just an open house. They're just being cool and helpful. Silvana wanted to know what have you done to help a FISBO. So at the end, you get the listing. Jackie posted, my student again. Showed them to post on Zillow, answered questions when they were presented with a low offer, sent them two free tickets to our local home garden show. After three months of FISBO, they felt they weren't reaching enough people. I listed the condo this past Monday and they accepted an offer yesterday after having 10 showings in five days. We are all extremely pleased. Bam, done. Now it took three months, so what? If you keep stuffing the pipeline, depending on their urgency and motivation, it may take a few weeks, sometimes a few days, sometimes a few months. But at the end, Jackie scored a happy client. Now watch this. She genuinely helped. That was not that pretend help where you say, well, I don't want them really to sell on their own. I do. I do. If I can help them, I will help them. But it will also demonstrate to them, and I'll show you another set of math that will make sense to you, that they're better off. They're going to, in most cases, pocket more money with you. Friends, just look at it from a logical perspective. If going for sale by owner really was that profitable, it really was that easy, if it really was a better idea for the consumer, the real estate industry would change completely. There would be no need for agents like you. 
there'd be no need for this industry. And why is that? And if you drive through the neighborhood, 95, 98% of the homes are still listed with an agent. Why is that? Because it makes more sense. It's safer. It produces more money, as you already saw. Now, I'll show you another evidence. I'll show you another example. Are you with me so far? All of this, you're going to learn how to demonstrate this, how to communicate this. The Fisborino system and the bootcamp we're going to go. If you want to check out the bootcamp, you can go and sign up for it. Um, you have 18 pieces of follow-up, 18 different items that you're going to discuss, help the seller, assist them. And in that process, you're going to position yourself as the authority. Yeah, because that's the idea. Trust and authority. Let's go back to this example. I was supposed to show the FISBO on Saturday morning to my buyers and the seller just messaged me and canceled. Apparently, he can handle it. They tried to get a listing appointment, but he stated, this is important, he stated, his wife has a friend who is an agent. How many of you have heard we have a friend in the business? If we're going to list, we're going to list with our friend. Or similar objections like friend has a license, we have an agent, we're getting buyers, we don't need you. You've heard those, right? Now, I call bullshit. I call bullshit on those. Here's what I mean. If it really was such a good friend, would that friend let them go for sale by owner, knowing they're not going to get the same amount of money, it's a big legal hassle, it's a big hassle to show the property, especially these days with the COVID and all that. It makes everything more complicated, there's protocol to all of that. Would you go with your close friend or your, your mom, go for sale by owner? Of course not, you would help them. So it's one of two things it's possible. Either the relationship is not as good as they tried to convince you it is, that's number one, or number two, that agent may not be that good. There must be something about that agent that is like, nah, not so great. So the way you handle it, you acknowledge it as with all of these objections. You're going to learn a process in the Fisborino. First step is you always acknowledge it. You don't pretend you didn't hear it, but you don't try to solve it on the spot. Never, ever do that. This is not the time or a place because the moment you start creating that pressure where you start solving the objection, handling the objection right away, you're going to get resistance. And you're going to immediately notice how they feel you're trying to convince them. Don't do that. Remember the rule we showed earlier, no convincing. So you simply acknowledge it first. Ah, oh, good for you. It's always good to have somebody you can trust. And now I follow up with a strategy called QAQ, question, answer, question. QAQ. And I ask another question. I answered the objection and I follow up with the question. So where are you guys going to go? Have you picked the house yet? So I acknowledge it. Don't necessarily need to handle it. Why? Because I know one thing, what they say they're going to do and what they end up doing are very often two very different things. So I don't react, I respond. Here is what it is. The seller says, we will probably list with a friend. Here's what they really mean. We will list with our friend unless a better agent comes along. Because at the end, friend, they're looking for someone who can provide the certainty that they're the best choice somebody that they trust. Now, the reason they trust a friend better is because they usually know them longer, they've been around with them, they know each other, so there is more trust. So what I focus on is not to knock the friend or not to demonstrate my abilities, but to continue building that relationship so I can reach the same level of trust. And with certain skill and certain components that go into these conversations, part of it is psychology, part of it is neuro-linguistic programming, you can accelerate that process. It can be architected, okay? Think about it. Would you go to a friend who is a dentist if she's not a very good dentist? Would you? Would you go to your friend because he's a friend or she's a friend? I wouldn't, and I'm chicken when it comes to dentists. You go to the best dentist you can. If your friend is not that great, you wouldn't go. Now, what if your friend is the best dentist in town? You would go, but just like with the example about real estate, that friend would have never let them go for sale by owner in the first place. Does this all make sense? So here's the math part two. How do you get them more money? Let me demonstrate that. And again, with the right presentation, you can very easily show them the facts. It does require one thing that's called pre-framing. You would pre-frame with something like, well, Jim, you strike me as a person who really makes logical decisions and wants to save as much money as possible. Savvy seller, we call it. And I very much appreciate it about you. So let me show you. And then you demonstrate. So first, let me show you the math. Let's say the same house, 
is at 300,000, okay? Now, you ask the seller, are you cooperating with agents? And most of them will say, yes. So they're willing to pay 3%, okay? So they're willing already to, for the sake of math, your commission may be two or three, whatever it is. So 3% is $9,000, am I right? Yes. So we're down to 291,000, okay? Now, I usually ask them, well, are you really firm on your price or is there a little bit of flexibility? What do you hear most of the time? Ah, you know, we'll, we'll give a couple of thousand dollars concession. All right, so now I'm down to two, let's say 290, okay? Now with closing costs and all that, I'm gonna calculate their net. So now watch this, same house, Remember, we said they're not gonna sell for the same as the cops, right? They're gonna get discounted. But what if I say, Jim and I can, I can appreciate that. You guys wanna walk away with about 290,000 plus we're gonna pay off your mortgage. What if there was a possibility that you could walk away with about the same amount or maybe even more even after you paid the commission, would you consider it? And that means no headaches, no hassle of showing the house, we would take over everything, including the marketing costs, promotions. I would take care of everything to make sure you pocket as much as possible, enjoy the lovely home in Florida. Would you consider it? And they would ask, well, why, how would you do it? So here is how we would do it. If I know they're at 290, what is my difference? About 3%, right? So here is my question. Would one of the options be, can I add the 9,000 on top of that? In other words, with the right marketing and higher volume of good qualified buyers with the help of a multiple listing, with the help of promotions like open house, a little bit of Facebook advertising, all of that. Do you think in a high demand market, you could sell that house instead of 300 for 309? Maybe it will take an extra week, two, three weeks, but it's possible. So simply, one of the solutions would be add that 3% to the sales price. And now the seller is walking away with about the same, assuming that they would still try to sell for the same amount, which in many cases they don't. I challenge you guys, do a little bit of your homework, do some research and find out, your title company can help you with that, or uh, RPR can help you with that. There are resources and databases that can give you that information. Compare the sales prices of for sale by owners and listed homes. And in most cases, in my area, exact, there is a discrepancy. There's a little bit of a gap. Now you can compensate with adding a few thousand dollars to the sales price. We are in an appreciating market. My area here improved, increased about 10% over the last 12 months. That's about $80,000. So if the market is appreciating, I would feel pretty safe adding nine grand to it. Not to mention, what is 9,000 divided by 12 divided by 30? To a buyer, the difference is what? $20, $30, something like that, with 2.9% interest rates, it's nothing. So if I could market this property aggressively, if I can offer it to a pool of buyers and I tell them, look, you can have this for extra 20, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, something like that. Wouldn't there be a one buyer who says, yeah, I like that. I wanna go for it. Think about it. There is always a solution. Not to mention, you're gonna handle all of that stuff for you. You're gonna take away that headache, that stress. All of that. Start thinking what's best for the seller. What is best for them? They're better off with you. And they're gonna put more in their pocket with you. And you're gonna make it smoother for them. And you're gonna make it safer for them. And very often you're gonna make it faster for them. Where they don't have to deal with all kinds of flippers, all kinds of speculators, all kinds of shysters. How do you like them apples? Scott says, needed to rewatch this many, many times. Scott, you don't have to, just come to the bootcamp. I'll teach you this. It is not that hard. Once you have the authority and trust, this is essential, guys. None of this will work if they don't trust you, if they don't like you, if they don't respect you, if they don't see you as an authority. That's why it's important to have that first module in place. We're gonna spend the first week of bootcamp building that. They will not hear or understand this or believe you if you first don't position yourself as the authority. But once you do, this makes perfect sense. I mean, doesn't it make sense to you? Am I making stuff up that is illogical or made up or is trying to manipulate somebody? This is reality. This is math. This is logic. So I replace their fear. I replace their emotions and very, very often skewed perception with simple facts, 
that even a layman, even a civilian seller would go, that kind of makes sense. And if I do this with an intention to really help them, I mean, yes, I'm very transparent. I want to get paid. That's why I'm going to add the commission there. But this helps everybody. This helps a good buyer to find a nice house. This helps the seller to sell and move and get on with their life. This helps another agent to feed their family, helps to feed my family. Everybody wins. There is no downside to this. Nobody loses in this scenario where if they go for sale by owner, somebody's got to lose. Somebody's going to give something and somebody's going to be mildly annoyed with the outcome. And I will teach you how to do that. Now, there is one thing that this whole hinges on. You've got to believe you're their best choice. You've got to be convinced that you are their best choice. Because if you don't believe that there is nobody else who can help them more than you, if you don't believe that they're in much better help, they're in much better hands with you than anyone else, all doing it on their own, how do you expect them to believe? It has to come from within. That's where that confidence comes from. That's that skill where I know this stuff and I know the communication, I know the language, I own the influence. This is an actual book I wrote on influence, how not to be salesy, how to share this information with people without them feeling resentful or scared like you're trying to sell them or manipulate them. That's the secret. Because friends, this is what happens with for sale by owners. Do your homework, check. I encourage you, don't just take my word for it. I've done my homework in my area, you do yours. Some will sell on their own. Nothing you can do about that. Some will never sell, some will rent it out, some will list with another agent, that kind of sucks, but it happens. But where the money is, is some will list with you. And I will show you that you can convert 25% of FISBOs who you put on your follow-up. Why? Because it makes more sense to list with you, because it is safer, and because you know how to do it. You have a system. But you have to go in with the right expectations. You cannot go in saying, how can I fuck this up, or it's not gonna work, or it's bullshit, and FISBOs are assholes. If you do that, then I can't help you. You have to have a different mindset where you expect to get leads. And this is so important. This is the foundation of your success. You're going and thinking, I'm going to get some listings. I'm going to help some people. I'm going to make money. I mean, that's what the other agents are doing. There are no other secrets. How do you think we closed 6.8 million transactions last year? Bunch of agents are getting paid. The reason you're not is either you don't have the systems or you don't have the skill. I can give you both because that's what separates those who make the money. They built a system. That's what the whole Fisborino, which is the book I wrote on Fisbos, is all about. This is what the system looks like. I can show you. Camera two, fancy schmancy. It's a step-by-step -step process. I have one for expires. I have one for Fisbos. You just follow the steps. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's been invented.